Okie dokie, here we are back here at Titan Machine Tool. We're back on the lathe. We're gonna cut some threads. We're gonna cut a 65 millimeter by 2.0 pitch thread on these things. It's a metal hub with a hex and a thread inside. We're gonna cut an outside thread there. This piece is an, an extraction tool. The big 65 millimeter thread screws into something and then they use this thing. Screw that guy in like that, bing, 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 as it comes out the other side, bottoms out in the hole and pulls out whatever it is that they're pulling out. Gonna make three of them at 65 millimeters. We're gonna make two of them at 60 millimeters. I don't have ring gauges, so we're gonna use these spindle nuts to gauge the thread. We'll stay away, we'll cut the thread, staying away, stay away a little bit. Check it with the gauge, don't go. Check it with the gauge, don't go. Make tool adjustments, keep cutting until the gauge goes. When the gauge just goes, we'll take a couple extras, you know? On a 2.0 thread pitch, it's probably got uh, quite a, you get a few thousands anyways on the uh, tolerance, so. Once the gauge goes, a couple extra, we'll call it a day. We got three of them we're doing, like I said, different thread diameters. but we're holding on a hex. I didn't make these parts. Customer brought them to me like this. Okay, so the concentricity is not the best, but for what we're doing here, we're good enough. I checked them. I loaded it in, I put the indicator on it, I checked it. How much run out? A lot. Took it out, indexed it, put it back in, tried it again. How much? Less. Okay, getting better. Take it out, indexed it, put it back in, tried it again. Ooh. That's not too bad. Boom, take it out, indexed it, put it in, rinse and repeat over and over again until I found the best one and I marked it. Because I load the chuck the same way all the time. I have a mark on the chuck here. I put the chuck back on the spindle the same way all the time. I tighten down on this same key slot to tighten the jaws, same, same thing all the time. So I marked it. See in there, see that mark? I, that's what I did. I checked them all, that was the best location to load it on for the least amount of run out. I'm at, I'm at about 5 TIR, total indicator reading of about 5,000. So that's running out about two and a half. Not a big deal for what we're doing here. More than adequate. So I already did a test piece. He brought me three, he wants three, so I don't want to screw him up. So I did a test piece, picked up a piece of material here, turned it to the proper diameter, threaded it till my thread gauge went. Looks good, satisfactory. Okay, so now I know where my tool offset is. I backed it up a little bit. So now, in theory, when I cut this one, the gauge should not go. Make a couple offset adjustments, rerun the tool again, then the gauge should go. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do this one at 185 RPMs. See, that's got a little bit of run out. If you look at it, it's got a, I don't know if you can see it, but it does, it's got, it's got just a little bit. It's not, it's nothing inconsequential. All right, so here we go. Run, start, I'm gonna track, we always track for safety, just like safety glasses, track for safety. Put it in track, but here, here's the deal though, when you're tracking, you turn the knob, the carriage moves. But once it gets to a certain point, like I approach to 200 thousandths, when I program it, it says, all right, where are you gonna start on your Z? I start at plus 200. The pot's about 750 long, so I'm gonna go to a Z minus 900, which will give me a full thread right off of the piece, but shy of crashing into the chuck. When I loaded this piece, I loaded it up, so that I could run off the piece and not crash into the jaws of the chuck. I got some space there. So, if all is good, when we start to cut this thread, like I said, once you commit, it, it's gonna go. You stop turning the handle, it doesn't matter. It's picked up the thread, the encoder, it's running the cycle, it's cutting. So, it's gonna make that first pass, whether it flies into the chuck or not. A Little bit of oil on the tool, 
little bit of oil on the piece. We're tracking. We're gonna track up to this piece here for safety. And I hope for the best. And she goes. Now she's going. I can't do anything except hit E stop. A little smoky. Looked good. I was running the test piece a little faster, but it's mild steel. I don't know what these are made out of, so I slowed it down a little bit. I ran the test piece at 340. She was smoking. So I brought this one down to 185. We'll run this one. And if this one cuts good. Next one I do, I'll speed her up. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, we're going to cut this one at 185. I made that first pass. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to put the machine into CNC run. I'm going to hit go. And now we're going to let that baby go and cut. I think I programmed 12 passes and three spring passes. Here we go. Change of location here. So I can put oil on it. Probably really would have been squealing at 340. She's getting smoky. Breathe deep. It's all right, technically, technically I should be able to breathe that smoke and not die. Supposedly, it's all natural. Tapmatic LPS, Platinum Series, natural cutting fluid. It's supposed to be non-toxic, biodegradable. Yeah, let's see. I don't want to do any free advertising, but I'll show you what I'm using. All natural, supposedly. It won't kill me. I won't die from cancer five years from now. I'll just die from something else. All right, so there's my threads. I only got one hand, so ordinarily I would have hit him with the file while it was running. I already know I'm big, I know the gauge isn't gonna go. I'll give him the buff and puff a little bit, check him out, reset my tool, run it again until the gauge goes. But that's what we got going here at Titan Machine Tool today. On the lathe, making chips. Signing out, adios, Arriva Durchi.